Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. In the last part, a lot happened. Kind of too much to explain. But the main thing is, is that we're friends with Maverick. Now, that is the main thing. But we've gone back to the library, and we're going to hang around and chat with Remy, hopefully. So we shall see what happens. Upon arriving, I noticed that the library was the busiest that I'd ever seen it. There were dragons in practically every hallway that had bookcases. Despite the fact it was busy, there were a few sounds made with the exception of a few children speaking slightly loudly with their parents, only to be followed with shushes. Figuring Remy would most likely be in his office, I went there to look for him first, before checking the other parts of the library. Hello, hello? Hmm, no response. Maybe he didn't hear me. I'm sure a small peek wouldn't hurt. What's going on, man? Are you in here? I silently opened the door, finding Remy asleep on the bed in his office while surrounded by many open books. I lightly touched Remy's head, causing him to jolt awake in response. Oh, what are you doing here? Looks like it was my turn to wake you up. I was just resting my eyes. You rest your eyes with several books around you? Okay, I fell asleep while trying to research some information. It's so boring going through the same sources over and over again, trying to figure out what the authors could and couldn't be implying. That can't be the only reason why you fell asleep, though. I'm just tired, that's all. My dude is exhausted. I'm also guessing that he didn't exactly come here just to wake me up. I wanted to check up on you. Uh, it was to see whether you were sleeping. I wanted to see the progress of your work so far. Um, I went to check up on you, man. See how you're getting on. Oh. The conversation we had earlier may be a bit concerned about you. I decided to come here and see if you were okay. Oh, thanks. In any case, I'd better get back to work now that you've woken me up. That report's not going to finish itself, I'm afraid. Nope. No? I told you to take it easy. The fact you fell asleep on the job is more than enough evidence that you've overworked yourself. Please, let me work this one time. I'm almost finished with the finer details of my report. It's not going to take long. You're trying to work so much to distract yourself from something, aren't you? What? The way you've been acting recently, how you've shifted your mood during our time at the cafe before Adeen came, how you seemed bleak after we baked the cake together, and how devoid you sounded after Adeen went to the orphanage with Amelie. With all of that, I'm guessing that you're working yourself to the point where you can only think about work, and not whatever is bothering you. Forgive me for sounding harsh to you, Remy, but I don't want you to suffer like this. I know, I know. Remy trailed off in thought, leaving an eerie silence in his office. His eyes darted from left to right, as if trying to come up with a proper response to my accusations. If you're really afraid of my condition, then maybe you could help me with my research. That is, assuming you don't mind. Anything to help you not feel as if you're carrying the world's burdens on your back. In a way, kind of am. Remy. Okay, okay. Do you know how to make spreadsheets? It's been a long time, but I think I should be able to. Well, this isn't too complicated. You just need to import and insert some data from my computer, as I've already made the spreadsheet. Here, let me show you an example of what to do. Remy booted his computer, and with a relatively soft fan spinning in the background, it showed the computer's interface. On its background, I saw a red dragon that I didn't recognise, though it looked similar to the one I saw in photographs back in Remy's apartment. Wait, is that Amelia? Her picture here does look similar to the pictures in Remy's apartment. Oh, Remy, I'm so sorry. Remy quickly opened a program and started to instruct me on what I should be doing. I was confused at first, but with Remy's guidance, I quickly got the hang of the program. You're quite the fast learner. Only because I learned from a wonderful teacher. Is that so? I can't imagine myself being really good at teaching. Well, in any case, I'll be going through the library halls and gathering some additional things to verify the information that I'll be presenting to the council. If you need anything, don't hesitate to come to find me. I already owe you enough as it is. 
Don't worry about paying me back, Remy. I'm happy to help you out. Remy only shyly nodded and left the office, leaving me alone with his computer in front of me. And now, every office worker's favourite thing to do. Praise be to spreadsheets, the foundations of the entire global economy before the solar flare. Got some work to do, helping out Remy feels good. Okay, that should be enough. My fingers are really going to hurt the next day after all this typing, aren't they? I sat and looked at the computer screen, staring at the work that I managed to do. Everything was organised in a pristine manner, sure to appeal to even the most perfectionist of dragons. Deciding to give my body a break from all that sitting that I had done, I stood up from Remy's chair and stretched. Just as I'd finished stretching, I heard a knock at the door. Hey, could you open the door for me, please? Thanks, it's a bit hard to open the door when you're carrying so much stuff. Did you carry half the, half the library with you? You really like to gather as much information as you can? You could have just asked me. Uh, I don't know. Normally I would say the top one is a bit of a joke, but I think Remy, he's, he's not really in the mood to be taking jokes like that. Um, this one, compliment his abilities to get the information. When your entire civilization's on the line, you have to be as thorough as possible. If a minor error is made, such as something that cannot be verified using your primary sources. Yeah, yeah, I get ya. So, better do everything correctly the first time, instead of having to do everything over again. And it looks like you've gotten the entire spreadsheet done. I'm honestly impressed at how fast you managed to complete it. You'd definitely be a better candidate to work in my position, should the position ever come up. Like I said, I learned from a wonderful teacher. Remy avoided my eyes, turning his head to try and hide his flustered appearance. Well, thank you for getting it done nonetheless. I might be able to finish everything I need later today, while still being relatively early for my due date. Now, if you excuse me, I need to get back to work. Or you could take a short break first. You even said it yourself. You have enough time. There is a thing about taking breaks. You're not as productive if you just work 24-7. If you take breaks, you actually come back refreshed and you can work more effectively. So, yeah. Take a break, man. I suppose so. Yes, thank you. Do it. Actually, how about I show you some gameplay of the video game on my computer? The one that caused your computer to crash? Yeah, that's the one. I'd love to. Maybe back up your saves before we crash a computer with all our important documents on it, please. Okay, Remy loaded the game on his computer and sat down in front of the desk. After pressing some buttons, the game started. Remy started to explain some basic mechanics of the game, the story up until the point he'd been playing, and many more details while I watched and listened with interest. You see, in Momoa, there's this one person called Alia, the Ascended, who serves as a tyrannical ruler of sorts. What makes him so powerful is that he has a human with magical divine abilities, as well as a massive army to enforce his position. So, to overthrow him... Okay, tell us about the game. Don't crash. You're really good at this game, you know. Please, it's just because of all the hours I spent grinding. Now, I'd love to show you more, but I really need to get back to work. I kind of lost track of time. No worries, I'm just glad that you got a chance to have a breather. And I'm happy that you were here to come visit me. I'll let you know if anything comes up with the council, or if there's anything I can do for you. Noted. Well, good luck getting everything done. It's the final stretch. Indeed. Goodbye. Have a good day. Same to you. Okay, that was actually a positive Remy meeting. Satisfied with my checkup on Remy, I decided to go home and take the rest of the day off. Yeah, felt good about that one. The last couple of times, it was a bit awkward. When I reached my apartment, I saw that Logan wasn't sleeping outside anymore. Oh yeah, we just kind of left him there, didn't we? Is he inside, or has he gone somewhere else? As I opened the door, I saw that Logan was sitting in front of a pile of sketches and notes while drinking a cup of coffee. You could have told me that your apartment was locked, you know. Hello to you too. I'm guessing that you slept well on the doorstep though, right? 
like a baby. Judging from all the stuff that you've laid out in front of you, I'm guessing that you didn't sleep very long either. You know how I am with sleep. I can get by with an absolute minimal amount of sleep. Add to that a strong cup of joe and a sleep schedule becomes a sleep recommendation. As if you had a sleep schedule to begin with. If I did, I wouldn't have done all of this. Logan gestured to all the pieces of paper in front of him, showing a sense of accomplishment with a smile. What are you up to now? Well, I've had the thought that goes something like this. What if the generator I'd made suddenly broke, leaving everybody back home at square one? I mean, nobody would be able to repair it if something went wrong. And it's not like I had the chance to make a second one either. It was too great a risk without knowing if the first one would actually work. You said that there should be two generators in the underground facility and not one, right? A main one and one as backup, correct? Yeah, but we need both if the dragons are going to be able to deflect the comet. What if I told you that having both generators might not be necessary? Excuse me. I've been theorising for most of the day at this point that the generators in the underground facility are able to be overcharged, increasing their generator capacity by at least threefold. Were you going to overclock it? With the blueprints I analysed from the production facility, the notes that you made during your research at the library, and what we have back home, I could probably rig something together that would be able to combine the best of everything. This of course carries a huge risk, but if we succeed, then we might be able to secure humanity for months if your description is anything to go by, all the while Dragonkind can get their asteroid deflected. Okay, how would you do this? Why do you always come up with such elaborate schemes? And you came up with all of this while I was gone. Okay, so how, how would you do this? I'm still thinking about that. I'll obviously have to get the parts, which I'm assuming I might find in the underground facility. It wouldn't make sense if that spare stuff wasn't lying around there. I uh, still need to think of everything though. This plan is still in its infancy after all. So, when's your next master plan gonna take place? So far? Tonight. What, what now, what? The comet is supposed to hit soon, right? Why would you want to waste time by just being a sitting duck? But you just came up with the plan? Should it be necessary to test it first? I've pulled off craziest stuff with less time. You just need to ask my university professors. That was, if they were still alive. But I digress. The sooner we get this done the better. I want to finish my notes here and then take a look at the underground facility shortly. Do you mind coming along? I think I need some rest myself. It's been a really busy day for me. Figured, maybe I should lock you out so that you can sleep outside while I'm gone. You're not going to let that go, are you? Nope. Any advice you can give me about that underground facility beforehand? Only that it's near the portal. It's also surrounded by water pockets, so it's unsafe to explore. The police are supposed to prevent anybody from entering. I have my ways of getting past that, though the pockets of water do concern me a bit. There's anything that might go wrong underground will cause the building to flood due to an explosion from the generators, causing us to be stuck here with no way to power the portal. You'd either have to know some intense theory for that conclusion, or you need to have personal experience of such an event happening. Anything you want to tell me? Sorry, I don't know what came over me for a second. Why is my head aching all of a sudden? That doesn't feel right in the slightest. Wait, is right even the correct word? For now, I'm off to the underground facility, and then I'll properly announce my return to Emera. I'll leave my notes here for now. I think I need to sleep right now. I'm not feeling well all of a sudden. Okay, take care of yourself and I'll see you when I'm back. Bye. Logan left the living room and went outside, stopping momentarily before closing the door. With my sudden headache making complex thoughts hard, I decided to climb into bed and rest, hoping that the headache would soon pass. Was the headache because of all the other time travelling that we've done? I don't think we've told Logan about that. I slowly woke up, feeling awake but not rested. As I looked around me, I was surprised to see that it was already dark outside. Was I really that exhausted? Well, at least my headache's gone now. I slowly made my way to the living room, where I saw Logan hunched over the table with more notes than before. He looked up at me with a grin as soon as he heard my footsteps. Oh, he's back already. 
Welcome to the world of the living. Did you enjoy your several hour nap? Could have been better. I didn't expect to be out for that long. You could have woke me up sooner. Uh, I didn't expect to be out that long. Neither did I. You must have had quite the day to have slept here as long as you did. At least you should be well rested enough for what we're going to be doing now. Unsurprisingly, the underground facility did yield some interesting results. I found the two generators, as well as some spare parts. Hell, the parts were even labelled, believe it or not. I'm sure they're faded, but still legible, even if I need to strain my eyesight to read them. I took some notes of the stuff I found, worked on a few things here and there, and came up with a plan. So let's just hope that everything goes smoothly. What a time to be having second thoughts. Please, do you really think that I can do anything and everything without being remotely concerned? I'm still human, you know. <sighs> let's just go through with the plan, shall we? What have you got? If I'm correct, there's going to be a few minutes that we have to enter the underground facility while the shifts for the police officers change. This change should happen in about 10 minutes. That's quite soon. We then have to do as much as we can in about an hour, as I'm sure that the officers will probably want to patrol the inside of the facility as well. Okay, why an hour? It's more of an educated guess, if anything. Might be more, might be less. An hour just seems a good enough of an estimation to make. I've also gathered all the parts I could in one place to avoid wasting time. If everything goes according to plan, we'd be able to successfully overdrive a generator while also scoring humanity a suitable backup in case things go south. Which might actually be more likely than you might think. Surprisingly, generators made from parts that are on the brink of death are pretty unstable. Who'd have thought? Well, I've talked enough. Let's get going. Lead the way. Logan stood up and stretched slightly before opening the door to my apartment. As nervousness started to rise within me about the possibilities of what might soon happen, I slowly followed after Logan into the cold night. Who's on, who's on duty tonight? I don't want to get them in trouble. If it's Sebastian, I'm aborting the mission. No, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I couldn't help but be concerned as we pushed through the dark roads. Will Logan's plan succeed and ensure humanity's survival, or will we break Dragonkind's last limb? Hey. Yes? I've come to realise something. Should I fail, then you can just use the portal to try again, right? That means that I don't really have to worry about failure too much? Because you just be able to try again and again until you get the perfect result. How do you know all of this? Because you just told me. Uh oh. Busted. In all seriousness, I had a hunch that the dragon's world just had to be related to ours in some way, considering all the similarities like the moon, the plants, the fact that the dragons could speak English. The list honestly goes on and on. All I needed was your confirmation. I figured I might as well try the classic travelling back in time approach to get the most unlikely possibility out of the way. It turns out the time travel was our reality, as weird as it might have seemed. I see. In that case, to make a long story short, yeah, I can try again. The reason why it can only be me is complicated though. Wait, this isn't the first time you've done this, is it? You know, the whole thing with Reza and whatnot? I mean, yeah, probably not. I'm assuming that you can't remember any of your previous attempts then? Mm, yes and no, it's kind of complicated. I expect as much. I mean, why would time travel ever be simple? Well, maybe you don't have to do all of this again. Maybe this will be your perfect result, whatever that is. In the meantime, I'll try my best with this. After all, Dragonkind, and by extension humanity, is depending on us. I can't screw up here by messing with the generator. You can do it, Logan. After all, we've come this far, so why doubt yourself now? I guess you have a point. We can do it. And we're here. Looks like we made it just in time. Look. As I stared at the portal in the distance, I saw a dragon I didn't recognise walk away from the portal. They stopped, took a few steps back, and flew into the skies. Are you ready? My body is ready. <laughs> Alright, let's go. We approached the portal, which stood tall underneath the canvas of a deep dark blue. Logan wasted no time, 
going immediately toward the entrance of the underground facility. I followed Stoot, not wanting to waste more of our precious time. Gotta do this. We got about an hour, I think, to do it. The familiar, cold fluorescent lights greeted me, just as they did when I first came to the underground facility. Memories of what had happened here, memories that I tried to avoid, came flooding back to me. So, remind me, this is where the whole Reza thing happened? That's correct. I find it eerie that this place is strikingly similar to what the city had pre-Solar Flare, yet also seems different, as if the technology here was reserved for something. Tell me, did Maverick kill Reza here, or somewhere else? And don't try to lie to me by saying that Maverick didn't kill Reza. What is it with you and suddenly figuring a bunch of stuff out? My question first. Yeah, he killed Reza, but outside, next to the portal. Not within the building itself. In this timeline. <laughs> I see. Now, for your answer, I thought that it was finally time to reveal what I've been thinking for some time. Hence the time travel discussion we had just now. Did you really think that I would believe a feral dragon would somehow find its way here to kill Reza? Besides, if Reza had died outside, do you think that just anybody would randomly show up? Did you forget how remote the portal actually is? Even the forest is quite away from the portal itself. There were gaps in your report right from the start. I somehow figured that something had to be off, as if you were hiding something. Sure, I kept my suspicions to myself, just to see where this would go. But you really have to work on your lying in the future. Just be lucky that the authorities were too angry to have noticed the gaps. That doesn't explain how you pointed it to Maverick, though. I thought that whoever killed Reza must have been important enough to be worth hiding from humanity. All I did was a bit of careful listening and a few mental deductions. Remember when I said that you could expect chaos at the police office before I originally went away? That conversation I had with Bryce was the final point I needed to figure out who Reza's killer was. Leading you to tell Bryce about a fake report, giving yourself enough time to transport the parts and blueprints through the portal. Exactly. One thing led to another, and now we're here. Honestly, I'm thankful in a way that Maverick did what he did. If it was revealed that a police officer killed Reza, the trade would have been stopped right then and there, if not worse. He had the same logic that you have right now. Really now? Interesting. Enough talking though, we're wasting time. Follow me to the generator room. Sure. Not been here before, I don't think. Now at first glance, that generator over there seems to be the main one. The backup is hidden behind a metal plate next to the main one. I'm guessing that both of them work side by side if they converge to one power output. What intrigues me more, however, is the fact that the backup generator is still completely intact, while the main one has a few loose wires around it. I'm guessing that this was the one that Reza ripped out, right? Seems like it. I don't know why Reza would decide to take the main one instead of the backup generator. Because it gives more power. Why would you take the weaker one when you have to provide an energy source for your dying home? I thought that this would be common sense, but apparently not. Okay, I didn't think it through. Maybe I shouldn't help out if that what comes out of me. Well, they do say that common sense is a blessing. Not when you have to use common sense against something or someone senseless. Well, I'm sure that your mishap was a one-time thing. I doubt it. I've already arranged some tools that I found around here in a neat little pile, so we don't need to waste more time getting some stuff. Unless something unforeseen happens, but those problems are for later. So how can I help you out? See that dusty file there? That file contains documented information about these generators, how those have survived, or why they're here baffles me. But I guess it's cool that they exist for our convenience. I'll need you to go through it while I start the process of upgrading the main generator. From what I've skimmed through, there's going to be a bunch of things that need to be monitored while working on this. This would have been much better if we had a specialised engineer of sorts to help us out, but I guess we can't be that lucky. Wait, would the administrator be able to help? Now that I think about it, where is the administrator? I haven't seen her in quite a long time. Her? How do I even know the administrator is a her? Hey, are you still here? You look like you just left your body or something? Yeah, I'm okay. Sure. Anyway, you'll have to monitor the temperatures, electrical outputs, and anything else that might cause a spark or two. 
Of course, general stability levels are necessary, considering that these are some pretty advanced generators, even by our standards. Okay, I'm going to go through the file while you start working on the generator. Logan only nodded in response. I thought I saw what appeared to be a glimpse of a faltering confidence, but whether that was just my mind playing tricks on me, I couldn't tell. We haven't told Logan about Izumi. So if a, another human just suddenly shows up, he's... Mm. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting thing if that ever happens. I went to the file and slowly picked it up, afraid that I might accidentally damage it. Almost every page seemed to have some coat of dust, with some pages being more visible than others. Trying to understand what the file contained, I read through the pages as thoroughly as I could. I could do our research. So, if I, what I read is correct, then I need to guide Logan on the current temperatures by telling him to work on the heat sinks. Electrical output should be checked if something seems to be buzzing ever so slightly. In addition, I need to have my eyes open for any open wires that might cause a spark, all while keeping the average stability in check by letting Logan know that he's about to risk something important. Apparently there's a meter on the generator that should show me the chance of something failing for each part I need to check. If anything on that meter goes into a critical state and isn't it fixed immediately, then uh, I don't want to think of what might happen. Okay, I think I'm ready to monitor Logan's progress. Let's hope that we're successful. I'm going to save that, because I don't know what's about to happen. Yeah, that's what I suspected. Stability stable, temperature stable, levels of electrical output is higher, and the risk of sparks is low. Okay, so the generator should be more stable. The temperature's getting too hot. Um, there's too much power. Okay, so if electrical output is higher, is there too much power going through the wires? Because everything else seems fine. Or redirect some of the open wires so that it doesn't spark. Um, let's do the third one. Because, yeah, electrical output is higher. We'll do... There's way too much power. There we go. Done. Anything else? The temperature is higher. Stability is unstable. Ooh. The generator could be more stable. Yeah, all these changes are taking a toll. I'll see what I can do. Nice. Risk of sparks is higher. But temperature is still hot. Okay, get rid of the temperature. And let's do observation for an obvious problem. Thanks. Fine. Okay, risk of sparks. I'm, I'm one behind where things are changing. And done. I thought that redirecting these wires would be a bit more difficult, but I'm not complaining. Okay, cool. Okay, risk of sparks is still high though. What do we go for? Is there one factor that overrides the others? One that is more dangerous and more volatile? Um, let's, let's go for power. Oh, that's weird. Easy to fix. Just a bit of this. Oh, it's, it's all going wrong. Okay, stable, stable. Sparks is higher though. Got it. Risk of sparks is very high. Okay, sparks please. Okay, I thought that redirecting the rise would be a bit more difficult, but we got it. Oh no, everything is going higher. Temperature is higher. Temperature is very high. No wonder I started to smell smoke from somewhere. Okay, you only drop it by one thing. So what do we drop next? Stability. Because that might have an adverse effect on... Every everything. Oh, two thing two at once a fiery high risk. Okay, power. Okay, get the power down. It's gotta be sparks, right? Because they're very high. Oh damn it! Ugh, I'll never get used to zapping myself. Thank goodness for my rubber boots to help nullify the pain a bit. Highly unstable. Ah on the stability. <laughs> okay. I gotta get rid of these sparks. He keeps getting zapped though. That's no good. Temperature is critical. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Highly unstable. Oh no. Have we made it through? As we continue to work on the generator, I could hear a noise coming from afar. My attention perked up almost instantaneously as anxiety and panic filled my veins. Logan. Not now, I need to concentrate. I think somebody is coming. I can't stop now. I need to at least finish the part I'm currently busy with for me to actually be able to step away from the damn thing safely. You'll have to stall for as long as you can. 
as soon as I'm done, I'll find somewhere to hide. Now go! Logan went back to working on the generator at a notably increased speed, softly swearing under his muffled breath as I walked outside of the room and into the hallway. H who is it? I walked down the corridor, hoping to see what had caused the noise that I'd heard. I was starting to think that whoever had entered had left, until a door at the end of the hallway opened up. It's Remy. Why are you here, man? I didn't expect to see you here. Neither did I. Might I ask exactly what you're doing? On the trip down memory lane, inspecting, I wanted to see if Logan was here. Ooh. All of these are, are pretty good, pretty good things to say. Hmm. Memory lane is an obvious liar. Underground facility is suspicious. But if we throw the blame onto Logan, because we don't know where he is, yeah, we do that. Wait, Logan's back? Yeah, he announced his return earlier today to Emera. I'm guessing that he isn't here then. I haven't found him yet. Yeah, yeah, we're being smart about it. I should have expected it. Why are you here? Aren't you supposed to be working tomorrow? It seems strange that you'd be up so late on a work day. I wanted to see if anything had changed since we confronted Reza. It doesn't seem that way though. How come? I have my reasons. Okay then, anything I can do for you? Not now, I'm afraid. I just needed some alone time in the middle of the night to get my mind off things. Ideally, I'd like to keep it that way. Though, I'm sure we could spend some time together outside. The fresh air would do us good. Sure. Yeah, later, Logan. We got more important people to be hanging out with. You know, I don't think that we ever spent a night together before, except on the night of the fireworks. I've been wanting to arrange something like this for quite some time. But without busy schedules, it just wouldn't be wise. Besides, I've always been a fan of the nights more than the day. The tranquility one could experience when the world was sleeping is almost cathartic in a way. If only it could be like this during the day as well. If the day were as peaceful as the night, then nothing would ever get done. I suppose that's fair. Can I ask you a question? All it is, what's up? I thought that you were a human. Not a bunch of ears. Okay. Uh, something about noses. I'm secretly a bunch of ears disguised as a human. You got me. Now that I want to see. Maybe some other day. It's a bit of a hassle to show my true form. Then I'll patiently wait for the opportunity. Now, my question. What would you do if you couldn't go back to your world? Not entirely sure. If something were to happen to the portal, then I guess I'd stay here until it gets fixed. Though, I'm sure you'd like it if I stayed here. I just have an interest toward humans, that's all. I do hope that losing the connection to the portal on the other side doesn't happen, though. I know how much you care about humanity, so if it turned out that you couldn't get back home, then I'm sure you'd be heartbroken. Yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. We already both put so much effort into keeping everybody safe. It would be horrible if all of that went to waste. Indeed. Remy stayed silent for a moment, looking skyward to the waning moon in the sky. As I stood next to Remy, I noticed a small tear falling from Remy's cheek. Hug or silence? We gotta do the hug, right? Not wishing to see Remy sad, I suddenly threw my arms around his neck and hugged him softly. Remy was visibly taken aback by my gesture looking away for just a brief moment before resting his chin on my shoulder. I wasn't expecting this all of a sudden. I figured that it was a good time to give you a hug, that's all. Thank you. We stood there in silence for a while longer, embracing the warmth of our bodies in the midst of the cold night. The warmth started to spread deep within my soul, calming whatever troubles I might have had seconds prior. However, as all things must come to an end, we eventually separated, standing in isolation once more. Perhaps we should meet each other more at night, if this is what's going to happen. We can meet any time we want though. But I suppose something like this would make an already wonderful time of day simply more wonderful. True. You know, 
I should probably go back home and try to get a relatively decent night's sleep. I'm sure you can figure out why. I understand. Well, it was nice talking to you regardless. The feeling's mutual. Good night. Night, Remy. Remy slowly walked into the distance, instead of taking it off like how I thought he would. My short time with Remy had made me completely forget about the generator, however. Hoping that nothing had bad had happened while I was away, I cautiously walked back into the underground facility. Nothing looks or sounds damaged. So far so good. Welcome back. Considering that you were away for so long, I'm guessing that it was quite a serious matter. Not really, but it's besides the point. Are you finished? Pretty much. I'll still check up on a few things whenever, but the car upgrade should be functional. I'm confident that the generator is powerful enough to compensate for the loss of the backup generator, so that's neat. Though, let's get out of here. I'm pretty sure the cops are due to come any minute now. Okay, let's run. With a feeling of accomplishment, me and Logan left the underground facility and walked toward my apartment in silence. I could see that Logan was so tired from working so intensely that he occasionally stopped and closed his eyes while taking a deep breath. We did it. Eventually we parted ways, leaving me to walk the gravel roads in the middle of the night back to my apartment. And we didn't get... well we did get spotted but we didn't get busted. I slept remarkably well that night, letting my dreams transport me to another world of half-forced memories and distortions of reality. The following day was unremarkable as well, just the typical duties that I had to do in order for the Dragon Council to minimise the impact of redirecting the comet. That day was exhausting, yes, but strangely, I couldn't seem to fall asleep when the rainy night came. Insomnia struck out of nowhere. Whether that was from stress or something else entirely, I don't know. In due time, I managed to return to the blissful realm of dream reality. Okay, the answering machine has started to ring, waking me up in the middle of the night. Hello? Who's this? Try and get some sleep? Who calls people this late at night and it's raining? It's Logan, isn't it? Okay, we're going to answer the phone in the next episode. This is Usho signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.